Hello and welcome back to Granted Gardens. My name is Melissa. My name is Tyler. <laughs> and today we're going to take you guys around the gardens and we're going to be harvesting. So if you're new to the channel, uh, we live in Maryland Zone 7A and we love growing food. So this is something that really kind of sparked our interest. We started this YouTube channel um, to be able to share the experience with friends and family. Um, so we are in the thick of it at this point. It's the 1st of August and we are going through today and kind of addressing the garden, figuring out what is dying off, what needs to come out and starting to plan for the fall gardens. So in this video, we're going to harvest some of our, our big harvests, some of, some of the things that um, are getting ready to be pulled and prepping for the fall garden bed. So this is our cucumbers. Uh, they are still producing, but they've definitely slowed down quite a bit. Uh, you can see that a lot of our plants are starting to get a little sick and dying off. Um, so I think that this may be the last week or so with these cucumbers. There isn't anything to harvest at the moment because we just made pickles this morning. Um, but once you start seeing the sickness and it's starting to take over the entire plant, um, that pretty much means it's, it's time to go. So here behind these flowers that volunteered, um, these are our onions. Um, it's time for them to come out because we are gonna need this space. Um, so we're gonna pull these out today. So they're not massive, but they're definitely usable. Um, we have grown onions a few times. We haven't had like massive success with them quite yet. Uh, I think with this in-ground bed that we've got here, um, we haven't really done much of, as far as amending goes to the soil. Um, we've added some stuff here and there, but I think moving forward, this is something that we definitely want to address. Spend a little bit more time in here um, prepping the soil uh, with the onions. They like to have a looser um, soil so that they can expand and grow a little bit easier. Uh, this might just be a little compact and messy for them. Onions. <laughs> All right, so here along this side, I did some of our noodle beans. Um, I don't remember exactly what type of beans these are, but we're gonna pick a couple of them here. So these are like the long beans. These are really cool. We did have Chinese red noodle beans that were grown on the arches. These are different. Um, I don't remember what they were, but pretty fun. We had this black eyed Susan that volunteered this year. Um, it's beautiful. It's just in a very inconvenient place. So we're going to move this to the outside of the fence here. All right, we're gonna move down to my peppers. Um, I think we've got at least a couple that are ready to go here. Here are the Jimmy Nardello peppers. Um, they, I've showed these a couple times. They get pretty big, but we are right, waiting for them to get red. And we've got a beautiful example right here. Very nice. So it looks like where the sun touches, it tends to turn red a little bit quicker. This one I think can maybe, maybe go a little bit longer. Actually, do you know what? I think this is fine. So a nice harvest here of the Jimmy Nardellos. One other thing that is new to us this year are a variety of squashes. So we've done uh, butternut squash and spaghetti squash. Um, back here, I've got a spaghetti squash going. You can see that it's starting to get moldy. Uh, it's dying back. We've had really, really bad time with squash bugs. Um, so it's just time to pull all the squash at this point. Um, but we're gonna pick one of the spaghetti squash here that's growing on the back. So we are new to this this year. Um, it looks like it may not be quite as dark of a yellow color as you'd want it to be, but it's definitely different from the green uh, that it was. 
I showed this loofah, I think, last week in a video. Look at how big it is. Awesome. These you want to wait for them to dry out totally on the vine. So he's still got a ways to go. Um, but we do have babies coming. So this over here is another spaghetti squash. You can see it's having a hard time to go. There is a ton of squash bugs on here. Um, and they're just devouring this plant. A lot of the fruit here is starting to go bad. There's no point in keeping that on the vine. We do have a couple still going, so we will leave this until we can see if we can get these ripened. Uh, but we do have one here that's ready to go. All right, so we did do some squash plants on the deck, as you can see, and they kind of hung over the side. They're in the same boat as the other squash. They've been eaten up by um, squash bugs and they're dying off. So we do have one really nice ripe fruit here. This is an acorn squash, so we're gonna pick this one. These also, uh, the squash that we're growing, will they're considered winter squash. So we can actually, if we store them properly, they will last us through the winter. They will last a lot longer uh, than a standard squash or melon. Then we've got these squash here. These are also butternut squash. Um, and again, the plants are starting to get sick and die off. Um, so we've got a decent sized one here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that. We have another one hiding over here. Well, we're back to the peppers. Gotta check on these banana peppers. I've been picking from these pretty regularly. We just canned two jars of them today. Try to let them get a decent size. That's a pretty good size. I absolutely love banana peppers. I'll put them on like sandwiches, on like salads, virtually anything. Um, I do have a video from a really, really long time ago of me, um, I think they were, I was doing refrigerator banana, like pickling refrigerator bananas, uh, banana peppers, but I will put the link here. Um, you can get really creative with them. The one thing that I think of whenever I think of like banana peppers is I think of uh, like Subway sandwiches because I usually like load them on there. Um, but there is also um, like a roast uh, that you can do. I think it's called like Italian pepper or something uh, where you put a roast in the crock pot and throw in a bunch of the banana peppers and it's delicious. Got a blot pepper that's getting pretty close, but I'm gonna leave him on here for another day or so. Lots of good stuff. All right, so we're going to swing around and look at some of the pots. I know, I think I've got some green peppers over here that are ready. Oh yeah, that's a nice size. Oh, isn't that pretty? These ones here don't tend to get all that big, but they're definitely gonna be good in a stir fry. We'll move on up to the deck. Um, so, so far, the only tomatoes that we have gotten have been the cherry tomatoes. We don't have any large tomatoes quite yet, eagerly waiting, uh, but I do love my cherry tomatoes and one of my favorite things to do with them is to turn them into sun-dried tomatoes in my dehydrator. Um, and so, I don't know, I might do a video on that sometime because that's like my favorite way to use them. Um, they'll store that way so you can use them throughout the year or they're also just really good as a snack. These are the tiny Tim tomatoes and these are just the most interesting tomato plants I've ever seen. So they're very top heavy, so they fall over. Um, and this one's a bit dirty, but you can see, like they grow more like a tiny little bush. And if you lift up the leaves underneath, you can see it like they just pack in the tomatoes, man. They're just crammed in there to the point where some of them are so crammed that they split. And like, you almost have to like wedge your fingers in there just to get them out. Um, but these are really cool because they stay so small. Like the actual plant stays so small, but they're very prolific. 
So over here, again, we've got some of those tiny Tim Tomatoes. This one's probably a better example of, you know, it's just so tiny, the little plant. But man, they just cram those tomatoes in there. This one's been well picked at. It's very hard to do with one hand. And you really gotta move the foliage around because they tend to hide in there. Get ya. But they're a really good sized tomato for such a tiny plant. I'm checking out my eggplants here. I don't think he's quite ready. Um, you can see how he's very shiny still. Typically when eggplants are ready and ripe, that kind of dulls down a bit. Uh, but man, that's a nice size. Now this little tomato plant here, this was the one that I got for free from Lowe's. Um, and it is a, it's a Foodie Fresh Candyland tomato is the name of it. Um, it was fun for a free plant. I don't know that I would grow it myself um by choice it does it does have a lot of tomatoes on it but like fully ripened they're very tiny very bitty um and i don't know they're cute but i'd rather get a bigger tomato i think Gotta come out and check on the blueberries. They're not quite there yet, but getting there, getting close. I see one right here, I'll try. Ooh, two. Oh yeah, those were sweet. Those were definitely ready. Yum. Zero regrets about getting these blueberry plants. Oh, pause for beauty. Isn't that an amazing garden? This garden always blows my mind with just how abundant and gorgeous it gets every year. And I love the fact that it looks different every year too. Just beautiful. That's a different looking spider. Hello. The peppers this year have been a trial for me. Um, a lot of my labels were off and now the ones that are labeled don't seem to be labeled correctly. So this plant here is clearly labeled as a Hungarian yellow wax pepper. It don't look like one though. These are not Hungarian yellow wax peppers. I'll have to look at my uh, list of peppers that I grew this year because that's definitely not what that is. These ones I believe are shishito peppers, which that might be what the other ones are too. Um, but this one looks like it's getting there. It's a little red, but I'll leave it for a day or so. So these are definitely Thai peppers. None of them are ready yet, but I can tell by the way they're growing. All right. All right, I think we've got some cayenne in here that are ready as well. And we'll check on our tomatoes here out front. Looks like we've got a few of them here that are ready. And then these ones, I believe, are Mexican midgets. So, really tiny, tiny tomatoes again. Um, I don't know. They're, this one I, isn't my favorite. There's not that many tomatoes on it. And once you do get them, they're very tiny. So probably won't do this one again. I like the idea of the tiny Tim tomatoes and I think that I was kind of hoping for that same concept with the Mexican midgets, um, like a smaller plant um, for smaller spaces. Um, but if it's gonna be a big plant, I'd rather get big tomatoes, but that's just me. I don't think Tyler will mind if I come through and pick up some of his ground cherries. So these are ground cherries, if you're not familiar, they kind of grow inside these husks. And then you can pull back the husks and there are these really sweet, sweet tomatoes. Um, they're delicious. And the concept here is you wanna wait for them to actually fall to the ground. That's why they're called ground cherries. Uh, you don't wanna eat them off of the bush. Um, I've heard that they're toxic that way. 
Um, but once you let them fall to the ground, they're also going to be a lot sweeter. Not a bad harvest, I'd say. Pretty good. Now we've just got to get these onions to dry and uh, we'll be all set. Beautiful. Alright, we're going to take these onions and try and find a place in the greenhouse to set them up so they can dry out. Oh my word, I have not been in here in a while, obviously. Oh gracious, what a mess. Note to self, add cleaning out greenhouse to the to-do list. So ideally when you are drying out your onions, you wanna use some sort of a rack that allows airflow both on top and underneath. Uh, we're gonna repurpose once again this old greenhouse that we used to use um, at, is a perfect setup for this because it's gonna allow airflow both on top and underneath um, so we're just gonna lay our onions out on this and let them sit for a while all right so that worked out perfectly um, what was nice about this too is that some of the onions were rather small so I can kind of set them here on this middle section where that bar is underneath to keep them from falling through um, but we'll keep the onions in here uh, for probably, I don't know, about a week, and then we'll check on them. I don't know. I'll probably check on them every couple days. It's the first time I've really done this. Um, and once they are dried out, we'll take them in and store them. Thank you guys so much for harvesting with us today. We appreciate you guys coming along. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really neat to just see like the new stuff that we've had growing in the garden this year. So it's always fun to harvest something for the first time that you've never grown before. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And we look forward to sharing more with you soon.